What is up, Facebook, Instagram friends? Hello, hello. My name is Dustin. And I am Tanya. And we are Road Trip Adventure. Yes, we are. We are your favorite road trip adventure vlog in the world. That's right. Period. You just don't know it yet. We don't do <laughs> foodie coffee breaks. We do adventure. mountain hikes and adventuring. <laughs> So come with us today on a little adventure etiquette. Yeah, so um, if you've been following us for a while, you've probably seen us post a lot about hiking. A lot of our adventures have been around hiking. And I would say that we've become pretty expert at it. And with that, with our hiking adventures, we have noticed a lot of trail etiquette or lack thereof. So with that, today we thought we would bring to you 10 tips for proper trail etiquette anytime you're out just hiking, trail running, mountain biking, or just going for a leisurely walk on a trail. Um, so Yeah, and that's walking, what do you call them like in town? To me those are walking paths uh -huh. or, um, or hiking trails, like that goes both one and the same, your little concrete ones you have in your neighborhoods, sidewalks, everything like that. It's just, there's a lot of people that do a lot of things and we just want to clear some things up on kind of the etiquette or, or sort of what the rules are when hiking, on the trail, on the dirt, in the mountains, whatever it may be. Sure. All right, Alejandro, Josiah, Carousel, thank you guys for joining thank us. Thank you. Let's hit it up. Let's dive in. So I think the number one rule for trail etiquette should be being courteous. And that's just when you pass people by, you know, saying good morning, how's your day, or just, you know, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, extravagant. Just, you know, say good morning or hello or, or whatever the case may be. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, be the first is what I, we mm -hmm. like to call it. Be the first person to say hello. Be the first person to give a smile. Be the first person to say good morning. And you'd be surprised how many people, oh, good morning, like you can tell that no one's ever said that to them. Right. So be that person, be the change, be the difference that you wanna see. Mm -hmm. Be polite, be courteous in all situations. Sure. And it'll make the trail a better place to be. Mm -hmm. And also too, like if you're coming upon somebody, some people have a faster walk pace or a slower walk pace. So if you are coming upon somebody, you know, instead of sneaking up on them, you're, you know, saying like, hello, or, you know, just to address that you are behind them and you're getting ready to pass them. That way you're not um, spooking them and, you know, anything of that nature. Sure. Um, also to tie in with being courteous, one thing that I would like to mention is use of cell phones or music or any of the things like that when you are out on the trail. Um, we have gone on some hikes where people bring their portable um, uh, beat boxes or yes, thank little, you. little uh, pod Bluetooth speakers. <laughs> and they'll just have it blaring music, which is fine, but not everybody wants to hear your music. Sure. Um, so just be courteous of the people around you. You know, if you do want to listen to music, maybe put in some headphones. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're by yourself and you're listening to music, great, but then, you know, turn the volume down when people approach you. Sure. Same thing with talking on your phone. You know, maybe you are speaking to somebody and you're talking about this epic view on your hike that you discovered and you're chatting with the person on the phone. You know, just, you know, be a little bit courteous of the people around you who are trying to take in that as well. Yeah, a lot of people are in nature to escape those things, mm -hmm. you know, to take in nature, actually, to hike, to see the birds and the bees and the deer. And the only way you see them is being quiet and courteous of nature. And so take in nature or like she said, you know, if, if you want music or something like that, use headphones and, and be courteous of everyone else. Um, yeah, it, it just helps with everybody. Uh, we were on a hike a couple weeks ago, and you could tell there was there was a person with a little beatbox thing, and about every person that encountered them wanted to smack them, and you know you don't want to be that person mm -hmm. on the trail. So. Yeah, because it was blaring so loud um, that you could just hear it for 
smiles, it seemed like. What's up, guys? Yeah. Thanks for joining Hello. us. Mike, what's happening? Hi. So, yeah, number one, be courteous. Um, the second tip we have for you is who has the right of way? Yeah, this is a big one. So, when and it, most people don't know. Right. So, when it comes to hiking or, you know, walking on the paths, like Dustin said, a lot of times people aren't really aware of who has the actual right of way. And so we'll go into a few different ones. So the first one being animals always have the right of way, uh, whether it be horses, people with dogs, like let those people buy because like, especially with horses, horses can or get donkeys. panicked or donkeys. They can get panicked when, you know, like if they're going up a hill, you know, a lot of times they just want to get it going. So get out of their way, let them buy let them through. Yeah, we we went on a uh, have a Sioux on our big hike trip there. They use mules mm -hmm. and mules have the right of way. And so, yeah, obviously let the animals go, stay out of the way, don't try and pet like mm -hmm. they're work animals and they are usually on a mission. So, and sometimes with that too, you can ask the person who's on the horse like where is a good place for you to stand so yeah. you're out of their way because sure. they're the one controlling the horse. So, you know, how, letting them know that you're letting them guide that horse where they need to be and you're out of the way yep. is, is very Good proper. Um, and then people on bikes. People on bikes yield to hikers or animals. And that can go either way. Yeah. Um, the reason they say, like, people on bikes have to yield to hikers or animals, or we'll just say hikes, hikers, is because they have, like, people who are hiking are using their legs and, you know, have a lot more exertion as where people on bikes can just get up and go and they can move. Um, so that's why they say that let the hikers have the right of way. But in a sense, too, people on bikes, a lot of times they're, like, mountain bikes, they're flying. Yeah. It's easier for the people who are kind of slower to just step aside and let those people go by. Yep. So, and a lot of them carry bells now, and they'll just ding, ding on your mm -hmm. left, and they'll just go right on by mm -hmm. you or whatever. So I think the biggest key here is just to be alert. Um, be aware of your surroundings. If you see bikers coming by, you know, just be aware of it. And that kind of goes back to the headphones thing, like being aware of where you are. You know, we've came across rattlesnakes. Mm -hmm. We've came across bikers going 50 miles an hour downhill. Like... Headphones, yes, for your music, but at the same time, like, be mindful of what you have going on around you. You know, that there's still, there's other people using the trail, and it's not, I know, all about you, but uh, it, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, so be, be mindful, be prepared. Absolutely. Um, and then when it comes to hikers, the person who is ascending uphill is the person who has the right-of-way versus the people who are coming down. And the reason why that is is because they're using more exertion to go up and so a lot of times they're in a momentum and they're you know trying to just get up that hill as where people who are descending they're not using as much to go down so it's easier just to let those people go by and step aside sure now sometimes people who are ascending will see hikers that are coming down and they might just move to the side and use that as a time to catch their breath yep but in that sense, it's their call as to whether to keep going or, you know, to step aside. Sure. And then the next one would be for groups. So if you have people who are hiking in groups versus people who are hiking solo, the people who are in groups are the ones who have the right of way. And that's just because there's more of them. It's easier for one person to step aside than, say, a group of five or ten people. Yeah, and that's big too, and I want to touch on that just a teeny. Some of the trails we're on are 10 feet wide, and some of them are on were two feet wide. And if you are in a group, you still need to walk single file so that everybody has their spot in the trail. And a lot of times, Tanya and I will meet people that'll walk shoulder to shoulder to shoulder to shoulder and have no intentions of getting out of the way. And so we will completely get off the trail, let them by, and they act like nothing happened like it's you know, oblivious yeah, to them. yeah <laughs> they don't have any idea yeah but it, be mindful like be respectful of other people that everything is not for you like you're, you're not entitled to be able to take up an entire trail or whatever mm -hmm. you know single file just like car driving just like anything else yield to you know 
you stay on the right, they'll stay on their right, and you'll pass each other just fine. Right. But yeah, we run across a lot of groups that just assume that they can do whatever they want and they take the whole trail and mm -hmm. we should be out of the way for them. Yep. And so, yeah, it is what it is, but just that's part of the reason we want to talk about these things. Just hopefully our followers are not doing the same thing and we're making the world a little bit better and the hikes a little bit better and everything will be a little bit better. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that touches on number three, which Dustin just spoke of, hiking in single file. Um, it just makes it so much easier for people to pass by on the trails. That way, you're not because some of the trails, you they want you to stay on the trail, so you're not messing up the vegetation and stuff that's trying to grow. Um, and so instances like that where we have people who are like four wide trying to pass on the trail, we have to we have nowhere to go, so we we have to just like get off of the trail and we want to prevent from doing that and of course it just goes back to being courteous yeah and you'd be surprised how many people will look at you like mm -hmm. you know like of course <laughs> like, you got out of yeah, the way move <laughs> You're right it's yeah it's unbelievable right um and then number four is keeping to the right pass on the left uh like he said just thinking about like how you drive vehicles you stay on the right I guess if you're in some places that might be different sure. but you stay on the right you pass on the left and going back to as well letting people ahead of you if you're going to pass them let them know that you're coming so you're not sneaking up on them and catching them off guard yeah because there's definitely faster hikers mm -hmm. than others and most people will you know move aside excuse me and let you pass by that way you can keep going and you know not everybody wants to be all clustered up out on the trail right Number five, keep pets on a leash. We've heard so many times, we've seen a lot of times people will have their pets off of a leash. Um, actually, we just went on a hike last weekend. And Don't tell them where. I won't tell them where. So we went on a hike last weekend and there were a few people who had their pets on a leash, but then there were several who let their dogs roam free. And the dogs would that were roaming free would run up to the ones that are on the leash and they'd be like, oh, it's okay, they're friendly. The problem with that is one, some people don't like dogs. I'm a huge dog lover, sure. don't get me wrong. Like I want to pet all of the dogs and, and everything like that, but some people are not that way. Some people don't like dogs, might be scared of dogs, whatever the case may be. So just because your dog is friendly doesn't mean that everybody is yeah. going to like your dog or enjoy that they're coming up into their presence. Yeah, not everybody likes muddy paws with slobber all over them. Exactly. Seriously, and that's we were in a spot where muddy paws and slobber was a thing. Mm -hmm. And the same people that she's talking about had a dog that said, oh, don't worry, she's friendly. And it wasn't... Two minutes later? Two minutes later, and it was in a straight up fight with two dogs on a leash mm -hmm. and that's where it's kind of crap that these people were following the rules you weren't following the rules and your dog started a fight with dogs on a leash mm -hmm. and that's the problem behind it you know not everybody likes dogs and not every dog likes another dog so if you just have your dog on a leash and everybody else has their dog on a leash everything can be taken care of and have no issues and, sure. and allow you to continue to bring them Mm -hmm. But see, what people don't realize is if you start having dog fights and problems and blah, 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 you just won't be able to bring your pets anywhere anymore. Right. And that's not what we like or want to see. Um, mm -hmm. That's one thing we do like about Colorado is they're very dog friendly. Yes. And so we get a lot of instances with dogs. But like I said, the more instances that you have of negativity, the faster they'll just say, well, you can't bring your dog no more. Yeah. Um, and then one thing I want to touch on that as well is that so people who do have dogs and want to walk their dogs take them on hikes whatever they have them on a leash don't just assume that you can go and pet somebody's dog if you pass them on the trail um some people don't like that some people have service dogs which you should not be petting a service dog yeah. um and some people you know don't appreciate you just coming up and, and trying to pet their dog one thing I always like to do is ask. Um, if I come across somebody and they have their dog on a leash, I like to ask them permission if I can pet their dog. And I've never had anybody say no, but it's just giving that courteous of asking permission to touch somebody else's dog than just assuming that it's okay. Sure, and some people have emotional 
support dogs mm -hmm. and they are a little more sensitive and so like they're using it to support their emotions right. and they like sometimes people are overwhelming to other people and they don't want you by them or their dog right. but she touched a little bit on service dogs and service dogs are actually working and so they're not to be messed with. They're actually trained for diabetes or stroke or PTSD. PTSD or things like that. And so they are actually being mindful and paying attention to their owner and being a service to them. Most of them will wear a red vest that'll say service dog and they are not to be touched. Just like any human, you don't just walk up and pet some human's face or if you do, I'm guessing it don't turn out good. <laughs> But it's, they're the same way, and they are working, and they are not meant to be touched. So be courteous of other people's things, be courteous of other people's animals, and be courteous of other people, and a lot of these situations will be taken care of. Absolutely. What's up, James? What's up, Scott? What's happening? Hi, Penny, what's going on? Thank you guys for joining us. Yes, thank you, thank you. All right, so number six ties. Is my biggest pet, <laughs> pet peeve. Get I'll it? let you. What? I'll let you cover it's this. It's my one. biggest pet peeve. Yeah. All right, so number one, when your dog goes number two. Number two is at least decomposable, and it will go away. And I am not at all telling you to leave your dog shit lay everywhere because no one wants to smell that near the trail. Nobody wants to step and in no it. No one wants to step in it and no one wants to deal with it. But the last thing that you should do is take a non-decomposable nasty plastic bag and pick your dog's poop up, tie a knot in it, and then throw the bag in the weeds. You, you missed the whole point of that. Mm -hmm. So if you are that person, don't let me see. Shame on you. <laughs> I carry them bags. I pick them bags up mm -hmm. and I carry them back to the trash can and I don't have a dog because that makes zero sense to me. So you literally took something that the earth would decompose of, of itself because you were lazy and then you put it in a plastic bag that won't decompose and everybody has to see and walk by. Let that run through. Yeah. So if that is you, I wouldn't recommend letting me see you out on the trail leaving your dog poop in a plastic bag along the side of the trail. It won't go well. I will say something mm -hmm. that's rude. It's disrespectful to the park. It's disrespectful to the place that you're at. And a lot of people complain about, well, I had to pay a $10 fee to go here. or I had to do that. That's because they are paying to pick up after you. Just right. like at Walmart, that's why your fees are higher and blah, blah, blah. It's because you don't push your cart back. It's because you don't pick up after yourself. Simply picking up after yourself can save a lot of headache and a lot of heartache. And, and a it lot takes of, no time at all. Sure. And I promise you, back to if you don't want to bring your dog anywhere, keep acting the way you are. And eventually they'll stop you from bringing your dog anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it really is that simple. Uh, there is actually a lake here in Colorado that used to be free to the public. You used to be able to go to it, and it got so messed up and so destroyed, you now have to park in another town, take the bus to go there, and each person is $20 because it, people can't take care of things. Mm -hmm. So take care of stuff, and we can continue to see the beauty of this world. You keep continuing to destroy it, and we'll keep continuing to have to pay or not get to see things like that. And we don't want that, and neither do you. Absolutely. So, pick up your number two and carry it to the trash can, please. Yes. Speaking of bathroom, <laughs> so that's number seven. Um, sometimes you absolutely just, you have to go to the bathroom while you're out on a hike. And there's no bathrooms around and you just got to go. I'm back. So, with that... Be courteous. First of all, try to go off of the trail. Yeah. And they say at least 200 feet from the trail, go to the bathroom. Um, if you have to go number two, make sure that you are digging a hole. And burying it. And burying it. Um, it 
cuts down on smell and it's just it's better for the environment that way and animals will actually dig that up yes they smell you mm -hmm. and they assume that it's something else food or whatever and animals will dig that up your dog will roll in it yeah you know it's <laughs> truth be told it's it's a scent and animals are keen on scents and they will mess with it so yeah try to yeah. dig it bury it clean it up exactly now sometimes you know like i mentioned there's some places that they don't want you to go off of the trail because of the vegetation and everything like that if that's the case like don't break that rule and go out on the vegetation because you have to go like try your best to get to a place where you can um, again, being respectful and, and stuff of the environment around you. Um, number eight, if you've never heard of cairns, I think I said that right, cairns. Yep. Cairns are these rock, stacked rocks. Um, I, I know you've probably seen them in if pictures. If you've watched our videos. If you've watched our videos. Um, they're like the balancing rocks that you see. That's what they call cairns. Now, cairns are used as ways to mark trails. Yeah, trail markers. And a lot of times they're used in places where there's slick rock, where you have nowhere to, no other way to really mark your trails. Now, with those, the, the etiquette that we're trying to portray here is to leave them be. When you see them, don't add to them, don't destroy them, let them be because like the park rangers actually use those as markers for trails and so that way people don't deviate and get lost. Now there are places where people want to build their own and in that sense if you're in an area where they actually use these cairns for trail markers don't go off and make your own cairns because that will throw people off and get them lost on trails. Sure. So just be mindful of that not saying like we've been to places where we've built our own, yeah. but they were like I mean, on the you know, ocean, yeah, right. uh, or not on the, but yeah, on, on the, the ocean, yeah, in Washington, yeah, um, or just you know places like that where they're not actually being used as, as trail markers. Trail markers, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty serious when it's a trail marker, mm -hmm. and you come around the corner and there's 50 of them. Like, oh man, which way do I go? Yeah, and we did come across some of them yeah. um, in one of our hikes that we had to really try to pay attention because we easily got off of our trail and we you know we're clear up here and looked down and we were supposed to be like way down over here where was that at i can't say can't tell you yet because <laughs> that's in this week's vlog what so uh so yeah just be mindful of that when you do come across those number nine is to plan ahead and what we mean by this is if you're going on a hike, be sure that you are aware of how long the trail is going to be. Make sure that you have clarification. So we've come across trails that'll say 10 miles out and back. So then we're like, okay, so is that 10 miles round trip or is that like 10 miles there, 10 miles back? You know, make sure that you are clarifying and you're absolutely sure of how long that hike is going to be. Make sure that you know um, the trail route because sometimes they have connecting trails. A lot of times I like to take a picture of the trail head of the map so that way we can take it with us and that way I know like where we need to go. Or we'll take the paper map in, at every park because mm -hmm. I mean, it, we've been in situations, especially we've hiked some longer hikes and it would be easy to make a good day real bad if you yeah. got off. Um, so also make sure that if you know how long of a trail you're going to be on, you're packing appropriately for that trail, making sure you have enough water, especially in those hot summer days. Um, you're packing enough food for if you're going to be gone for a while because that food is going to provide you the energy that you need, especially if you're hiking like uh, in um, gosh, I can't think of it. Like the terrain is very difficult or you have a lot of an ascending hike. Mm -hmm. um, that takes a lot of energy out of you. Sure does. So just make sure that you're planning ahead, doing your research ahead of time so you know how long you're going to be gone, how difficult the trail is going to be, and that you have the right gear 
enough water and food to go on that hike as well. And usually when you get to the park and to that trailhead, it'll tell you the difficulty, what the trail looks like, mm -hmm. you know, the trail map, um, where the bends and turns and even where the other trails meet and stuff like that. So be, yeah, like take pictures or get a paper map mm -hmm. and always be paying attention where you're at. And another thing I like to use is an app called All Trails that will show you all of the trails in the area closest to you and then when you click on those it'll tell you all of that information the difficulty level how long it is kind of what you can expect to see on the trail it's a really nice map or app to use if you want to check it out and then the last one we have is leave no trace anytime you go out on a hike on a trail whatever you pack in with you make sure you're packing it out don't throw your wrappers on the ground. Don't water bottles. Water bottles. Don't spit your gum out on the trail. Like, be respectful. Leave it as you seen it, or even better. Yep. The only thing you should see is your footprints in the dirt. Exactly. And that's it. Um, one thing we have started to do is pick up trash mm -hmm. when we go, and we use the hashtag trash trash tag. tag. Yes. And that was by a friend of ours that challenged us to do so. And so even in our morning walks, I will pick up garbage. Because if I pick up garbage on my morning walk and she picks up garbage on her morning walk, and we inspire a third person to pick up garbage on their morning walk, and then they inspire, and then they inspire, and then they inspire, you could see like when we reach 100,000 followers, if a hundred thousand people were picking up one Walmart sack full of trash every day, the world would be a better place. And, exactly. and it truly is that simple. Mm -hmm. So we challenge you to use the tag, hashtag, trash tag, and pick up garbage when you go out for a walk or a hike. And if you do, be sure to tag Road Trip Adventure as well. Yep, or the hashtag Road Trip Squad. Mm -hmm. That way we see it and we can, you know, congratulate you and thank you and you can be a part of the road trip squad. Um, it's, it's, it would make us super happy. It would. Um, so yeah, use them hashtags, pick up some garbage, do your part to make the trails and the places and the people better all around. Absolutely. With that, that's all we have for the 10 tips for proper trail etiquette. Does anybody have any questions before we sign off? While we wait to see if anybody has any questions, why don't you tell us how people can get a hold of us or even get something cool like your shirt? My shirt. So there are several ways that you can get a hold of us or find us, obviously on Facebook or Instagram at Road Trip Adventure, which we are running both of those currently for our live feed. Um, you can also find us on YouTube at Road Trip Adventure where we do have quite a few videos up now and we are doing weekly vlogs so we drop a new vlog every Sunday um, usually in the morning about like 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time I believe so sometime in the morning we drop a new vlog which you can go on and subscribe if you're interested in following our journey uh, and if you hit that notification bell, you will get a notification every time our video does get uploaded. You can also find us on roadtripadventure.com. That is our uh, website, and we have a bunch of different gear on there where you can find t-shirts, hats, tank tops. And we do have some written blogs on there from a lot of our travels from last year where we did go to 25 different states. So if that's something you're interested in checking out as well. And what am I li leaving out? I don't know. I just lost Scott's question, whatever it was. Sorry, buddy. Um, text it to me and we'll get it out to everybody. Uh, for some reason, my phone tripped out. Uh, thank you, guys. Very important subject because more and more people are getting to the trail. Yeah, for sure. And that's the thing. Like, there is so many people out there that we are truly uh, need as much help as we can being... Uh, courteous and polite out on the trail all right i ain't seeing nothing okay um those of you who are on facebook sorry for the disconnection yeah. um if you do have questions just go ahead and post them we will 
type them in the comments so people we can answer those for everybody. Sure. So with that, um, if you do miss, we do these every Wednesday oh, yeah. at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you are unable to make our live videos, we do post them up on YouTube, so you can go back and watch them as well. And then, um, yeah, we'll usually drop out the next topic of what it will be for the week. Sure. So and sometimes we do questions. Sometimes we do things like this. Yeah. Or... If there's something that you're interested in us covering or questions that you have, feel free to reach out to us. You can direct message us. You can send us an email, um, any of those things, and we will be sure to you know, tie those topics around whatever, whatever it is that you have. Sure. With that. Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate it. As always, spread love. Bye, guys.